There's an old Japanese legend about Prince Shimato Takaru. Being a particularly violent prince who murdered his own brother, the emperor sends his son away to defeat eastern barbarian tribes and establish imperial rule. It was only on his return journey when he blasphemed against the god of Mount Ibuki that he was cursed with an illness and died. A display of the folly of taking on deities. The parallels between this story and Hayao Miyazaki and Studio Ghibli's film Princess Mononoke are obvious and indicative of how the film as a whole blends a particular kind of fantasy and reality to bring messages to contemporary audiences. Miyazaki has always been clear about his fantasy films having something to say. His first original film, Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind, based on his own manga, had a big enough environmental push to be presented by the World Wildlife Fund. And Mononoke is very similar. This is a distinctly Japanese film. Instead of simply putting man against nature and choosing a victor, it presents a Japanese style of adaptation and harmony as the ultimate goal. A representation of the country's shifting history, in particular the post-war westernization that Miyazaki grew up in. At the same time, the film doesn't romanticize the period it borrows from, nor the other films that cover similar bases. Far from the epic battles for cities that appear in traditional samurai films, Mononoke follows outcasts within nature. The ill, the forgotten and the abandoned are forced into a conflict concerning Japan's evolving beliefs. As Miyazaki once stated, it was in this period that people changed their value system from gods to money. While defending his village from a demonic boar, Prince Ashitaka of the Amishi tribe is cursed with a dark sickness. With his only clue being a metal ball found inside the boar, he is banished from his village and sent east, where he discovers a war between an iron casting village and the spirits of a nearby forest. Complicating matters are a group of monks tasked by the emperor to deliver the head of a powerful deer god, and San a human raised by wolves with a hatred for her own kind. Ashitaka's people, the Amishi, are a real tribe that, in small pockets, resisted the expansion of the Yamato Empire for at least a hundred years. While Mononoke takes place on the tail end of the Muromachi period, far removed from this, Miyazaki's fantasy establishes them as another outcast in the expansion of humanity and technology. The iron bullet that cursed the boar, and by extension Ashitaka, is a representation of this inevitable expansion. In the story, this is characterized by the leader of the ironworks, Lady Iboshi, a powerful and kind leader who, at the same time, demands the humans overcome nature as decisively as possible. Between her and San, Ashitaka, lover of peace, is trapped in a grey area. Both these women, and the sides they represent, are sympathetic through Ashitaka's eyes. Mononoke Critic Susan Napier summed up this duality by saying that Mononoke has an alternative vision to the conventional Japanese view of nature, which, while acknowledging the wildness of nature, prefers to view it as something that can be tamed and cultivated. In the film, nature is beautiful, sacred, and awesome but it is also vengeful and brutally frightening. The film continues its contemporary commentary by questioning both the value of tradition and change. While the industrial bent of Eboshi's people makes the latter obvious, 
The former is shown through things such as the trickster monk, Jikobo, who displays a reliance on religion in a crisis. The spirituality in front of him is ignored for his own worldview, a very common thread Mononoke holds up right until its end. As the clashing of worldviews become more violent, the results become more disastrous. The greatest hope remains with Ashitaka, who develops a rapport with the iron workers and the romance with San. The modern viewer is forced to grasp hold of his peaceful worldview as the others collapse around the beautiful world Ghibli has created. Instead of fighting against it like Yamato Takaru, Ashitaka finds another way. While at the end of the film, the answer of a harmonious relationship between humans and nature is obvious, the intricacies are left ambiguous. The nature created by the film's destructive climax is a new one, one that forces Ashitaka and San to live apart, despite triumphing together. As it represents both conventional and unique views on what nature can be to Japan, Princess Mononoke asks for an interpretation of both complex sides presented within it. What will actually bring harmony is something Miyazaki wants the world to discover for itself. Steeping the film in Japanese history and fantasy, his goal seems one of interpretation rather than representation. For the country to exist, what must the balance between man and nature be? When challenging the gods, the answer best be well thought out.